Well, every school day for 10 days, I'm giving you something you can do to kickstart your students' sense of numbers and increase their fluency with mathematics. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Over the two weeks of this kickstart, I'm giving you an action step you can take towards building your students' number sense and increasing their fluency with mathematics. Now remember, this does not mean that your students will magically have number sense and fluency by the end of our two weeks, but you will have kickstarted it and you'll have a roadmap to keep building it throughout the school year. This is day four of the kickstart. To kickstart your students' number sense, make sure that you've got the number sense kickstart checklist. This is the checklist of the 10 things that you can do to kickstart number sense this year. If you have already signed up for the Kickstart, you should have gotten an email with it. If you aren't signed up, head over to buildmathminds.com slash 10 day dash kickstart, and I'll send it over. If you have any issues with emails not getting to you, please email us at info at buildmathminds.com so we can ensure you get everything you need to kickstart number sense this year. Day four is all about something you are doing right this year moment. Listening. We listen to learn information in so many areas of our lives, yet in our classroom, we often don't. And if you were like I was, when I actually stopped talking and I listened, it was usually only for answers. I wasn't listening to gain information about my students' thinking, that's for sure. According to a post by Lori Gracie for TCEA, John Hattie shared these statistics at their conference about who's doing the talking. 89% of the talking that occurs in our classrooms is done by the teacher, not the students. Teachers ask, on average, 142 questions a day to students, almost all of which require three-word responses or less. And students ask, on average, 11 total questions a day, of which nine are procedural, like what page are we on? Can I go to the bathroom? Will there be a test on this? So how do we change that? First, it starts with our mindset about what our job as teachers actually is. Stephen C. Reinhardt's article, Never Say What a Kid Can Say For You, is pretty similar to my own experience as a recovering traditionalist teacher. On page 54, he says, When I was in front of the class demonstrating and explaining, I was learning a great deal, but many of my students were not. Eventually, I concluded that if my students were to ever really learn mathematics, they would have to do the explaining and I the listening. My definition of a good teacher has since changed from one who explains things so well that students understand to one who gets students to explain things so well that they can be understood. On page 57, he goes on to say, Like most teachers, I entered the teaching profession because I care about children. It is only natural for me to want them to be successful. But by merely telling them answers, doing things for them, or showing them shortcuts, I relieve students of their responsibilities and cheat them of the opportunity to make sense of the mathematics that they are learning. To help students engage in real learning, I must ask good questions, allow students to struggle, and place the responsibility for learning directly on their shoulders. I am convinced that children learn in more ways than I know how to teach. By listening to them, I not only give them the opportunity to develop deep understanding, but also am able to develop true insights into what they know and how they think. That really hit home for me. I went into teaching to help kids, and my definition of help was to teach them step-by-step how to solve problems, sometimes giving them shortcuts or tricks to get to the answers because I wanted them to be quote-unquote successful. However, we need to change our mindset of what success in math looks like, and we also need to change our definition of what 
help ing students looks like. You didn't see that, but I totally did air quotes. <laughs> Robert Kaplinsky did a fabulous job with his NCTM Ignite talk about productive struggle. It made me realize I was doing all the heavy lifting for my students. The video is just five minutes long, and I'll link to it on the resources page for this kickstart. But essentially, he was saying that when you are lifting weights and you have a spotter to help you, if the spotter does all the lifting, then you don't get any stronger. You aren't building your muscle. That's the way we tend to be as teachers. We are lifting the weights for our students and they aren't building their mathematical muscles. So what steps can you take to make that change? First off, do not try to change everything that you do. That is a recipe for failure. Pick one day, one chapter from your textbook or whatever you feel is kind of doable and make a plan to stop talking and start listening. Yep, that's your to-do for day four. Stop talking start listening. But that's easier said than done, right? So I've linked up a couple resources for you on that Kickstart page for day four. If you signed up for the Kickstart, then the website is in any of the Kickstart emails I've sent you. If you haven't signed up, go to buildmathminds.com slash one zero for 10 day dash kickstart to register. And I'll send you the email within just a few minutes. One of the resources I'll link up is Steven's article. There is a lot of great info in that article, but I'm going to pull out the five techniques that he gives. Number one, never say anything a kid can say. Yep, the title of the article. Now, honestly, this is impossible to never say anything a kid can say, but just keep that mantra in your mind because then any time that you find yourself explaining something, you're gonna ask yourself, hmm, could one of the students say this instead? And if so, ask them to. Number two, ask good questions. This one is actually about the mathematical questions that you're asking. If we only ever give kids questions or problems that are only asking them to solve an equation, that doesn't give the kids much opportunity to talk and for us to listen to their thinking. Instead, try implementing some open-ended questions. There are lots of resources out there, but one of my favorites is openmiddle.com. Number three, he says, use more process questions than product questions. Now this one was a big aha for me and is one of the main things that I started changing. I was basically only ever using product questions. A product fo focused question is getting kids to tell the end result. It is something like, what answer did you get for the next problem? Instead, you can change that to a more process-focused question that draws out your student's thinking process. Something like, you all just solved 39 plus 52. What would happen if I changed that to 35 plus 52? Do you solve it in the same way you did the last problem? Or do you think about this one differently? Why? The idea behind this change in questioning is to elicit your students' thinking process instead of, their instead of just their end product. There's too many P words in that. So number four, replace lectures with sets of questions. This one is really hard to do as a starting point, so I'm not gonna dig into it, but I would encourage you to get more practice with questioning before you jump in trying to replace all of your lectures with sets of questions. So number five is to be patient. In the article, he talks about being patient with the students and giving lots of wait time, which you totally should. I just want to also add that I want you to be patient with yourself. If you aren't good at limiting your talking right now, be patient, give yourself some grace. Remember that you are a recovering traditionalist and it is not easy to switch from the years of experience that you have of being a traditional style teacher to doing things in a new way. The rest of the article gives lots more practical advice on learning to limit your talking and increase the students talking about mathematics. And remember, it is linked along with other resources on the site with all of the Kickstart resources that you were emailed if you signed up. So go to that article Download it to your computer so you can go back to it later throughout the year. And as you start to do this more often, you can incorporate more of the ideas in the articles. So again, day four, stop talking, start listening. 
Reminder, if you have not officially joined us yet for this 10-day Number Sense Kickstart, go to buildmathminds.com slash 10-day dash kickstart to sign up. I'll email you the checklist and the link to the resources page where you will find the article I referenced in this episode, along with other things to help you with questioning and listening more. Make sure that you are signed up because this is just day four, remember? We've got nine other days of tips to help you start the year off with a solid mathematical foundation for your students. That's all for day four, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for day five.